Welcome to another episode of Burn Peak Express. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little different, but kind of the same. It's a part spin upgrade. Oh! A local mountain biker who goes to Brevard College, I was talking to him about this bike. He bought some pedals and cranks, things like that that his bike needs. And as you know, most college students don't have much of a place to work. They don't have that many tools. So I said, you know what? I'll throw the parts on for you. And I might have some extra parts that we can fix this bike up with. Because this is exactly the type of bike that I love having in the shop. This is a shining example of a sub $1,000 hardtail. I mean, it's got everything you need and nothing you don't. And on a plus hardtail, where you have these big tires, you still get all the things that are really good about a hardtail, all the responsiveness, but the tires take a little bit of the sting out of it because they're big and cushy. So I can't wait to make this bike even better for a local with parts that we have here. So today's a great day. Let's get started. So I like to start working on a bike that's clean. So yesterday I took it out to the bike wash station, got all the grime off of it, but the bike still has some scuffs on it and it still has some things that are definitely wrong with it. So first of all, cool bike. I've never heard of framed, but it says it's the framed Marquette. And that's a place up in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, the tires even have the state of Minnesota on it. And that might turn some people off because here in the United States, we think of Minnesota as a place with plains and farms and stuff. And you think, well, the mountain biking must suck there. That could not be further from the truth. There's big rocks everywhere. It's anything but flat and it's anything but suck. Very cool that a company would proudly display that. The bike is entry level. It's got good parts on it, but they're, they're not special. You know, it's a SRAM X derailleur. I've got the SRAM XO off of the P7 and I think I'm gonna hook them up and we're gonna upgrade it. He provided a crank set. It needs it. This is loose and it doesn't seem to want to tighten up. Good time to do some work there. Hook them up with a new bottle cage and this lock-on grip. I mean, I don't even know how this happens to a lock-on grip. I mean, look at this. It's like not safe. He's got a little nub sticking up there. I think we were going to take some liberties and eliminate that, make it look a little cleaner. Wheels are not straight. We're gonna true those. There is a mud guard here and you can hear noise and you think, well, is the tire rubbing on it? It's actually not the tire. It's those little hairs that are on new tires. I'm not sure what to do about that. I mean, you gotta do something, right? His chainstay, it's taken some serious abuse. So we'll hook him up with a chainstay protector. If we give this bike the drop test, I mean, it makes all sorts of noises. When we're finished with it, it's gonna be a much quieter bike. I think we have what we need to get started. Lots of water got in there. Okay, so this is interesting. I have never seen a handlebar with this cut in it. Yeah, this side is like that too. Whenever you're in this situation and you don't understand something, what you go and do is text Pat. A handlebar that is specific to a grip that allows for more of a squish on the outside of the bar. So Pat says this is no problem and you can run normal lock-on grips with it as long as you have that piece at the end to stop it from core sampling you. I'm gonna take his word for it. So while we have all the parts off it, the next thing we're gonna do is put on a nice chain state protector, which we're gonna use an inner tube for. So this is gonna make the bike a lot quieter. You can see some of the label from the tube, but adds character. Let's throw some cranks on here. So we gotta clean out the plumbing. There was a fair bit of water in there. A shop had told him that he needed new bottom bracket bearings, but that's not the case. These bottom bracket bearings are fine. It wasn't the shop was being dishonest. If you're replacing any sort of cranks at a bike shop, it is standard procedure to replace the bottom bracket bearings because it's a preventative maintenance task that really doesn't cost that much more and benefits the customer a lot. But in this case, the bearings are fine and we don't have a replacement for them on hand and so we're gonna leave them. These look good, super smooth. So he had a little, I don't know what you call it, sticking up from the stem, that bothers me. So I'm gonna cut this down a min peep so that it uh, sits flush with the stem. Okay, gonna just clean it up. Without fail, every time I do that, somebody says, hey Seth, you should use a pipe cutter. If you watch my other videos, I explain why we don't use a pipe cutter. I guess we should reinstall it. So we'll leave these pinch bolts loose until we can get it down on the ground and eyeball it. So I've gone over this 
I don't know how many times, but if you're new here, wheel truing is straightening out the wheel again. If it's really bent, you, there's nothing you can do with truing, but if it's just wobbling a little bit each way, you can get it dead straight with a spoke wrench and a truing stand. The way it works is we move these little nubs closer and closer. When you feel it rub on one side, you know it's bowed out, and then you can adjust the tension of the spokes to make it straight again. If you don't have a truing stand, there's all sorts of hacks that I have in my videos to true up your wheel. Not too bad. All right, we just ran into a little snag. I assumed because this bike came with a SRAM drivetrain that there was a SRAM cassette on there, but that's not the case. This is a Shimano type cassette. It's made to fit on a Shimano driver body and we just can't install this on there. So I need an 11 speed cassette. So parts bin. Ooh. I have a 46 tooth 11 speed cassette that'll fit. And this 46 tooth, it's still bigger than the cassette he had. He's still gonna get this derailleur. Having a parts bin is nice. And my time with Box, they supplied a lot of parts and they're going to good homes now. So now we'll put on this wonderful derailleur. Brand new 11 speed chain we're gonna put on there. Oh yeah, that looks good. Pat said that I should have kind of a solid end grip to go on here. So we're gonna slide them on. A college student did not supply these, but we're gonna hook them up from the parts bin. We don't have to do very much at all. I just have to hook up the cable and set the tension. This frame has internal cable routing, and what that means is that some of the cables on the bike go inside the tubing of the frame in order to hide it and make it look better. So usually there's a tube inside the frame that guides it, but sometimes there's not. Now it is so rare that I find a bike that's like this that I almost never get to use this tool. Here it is, IR 1.2. So I would imagine IR stands for internal routing. And what you find inside the kit are a bunch of cables with magnets on the end. And now we are going to take this little magnetic cable feed it on in here. We're gonna take this magnet and get a hold of it and guide it all the way. How sick is that? So now we can just tape the cable to this and just pull it right through the frame. And that's it, we got it. Now we're getting into the fun stuff that anybody can do. Pedals. If you have the pedal washers, use them. It helps the pedal not get seized. So the way this wrench got like this, was I went up to it and I just started chewing on it uncontrollably. And I put it between both my hands and just went to town on it. I, I don't know what came over me. This is a specialized Z cage. I took off his old bottle cage and it's a side load cage. So put the bottle in like this, you pull off to the left. You can't get it out on the right. You can only get it on the, off on the left. So you reach down and you pull it this way and it comes out. So he's got a little upgrade on his bottle cage. Man, these valve caps are just not gonna do. Yeah, they match the tire, but he got these blue pedals, went through all this trouble. We've got the BCM plastics bin. Boom, now they match the pedals. I have here a Lizard Skins gear strap. This is a pretty complicated gear strap. Let's, let's check this out. So this is all grippy, it's all rubbery. So it goes down here, it cinches down really nice actually. So we can go really tight with it. So finally, we have these little fuzzy guys that hit into the, the side of the thing. So how do we deal with that? We could take the mud guard off, but he probably has it on there for a reason. I reckon pulling these off will take about five to six minutes. This bike's been ridden, right? So these things have been worn off the tire, but they're on the sidewall. Like I've never had a bike tire where they were so prevalent on the sidewall before. I'm almost done. This, this didn't take very much time at all. No, there's still one. Here it is. All right, let's try now. Yes. They're all gone. Now, I would imagine that those hairs have no function for the actual tire. They're probably part of the manufacturing process. If any of you guys know what those hairs are for, let me know. I think the bike's done. I think it's ready to take out on the trails. We replaced those grips that were all broken and busted up, installed all his parts, his cranks, his pedals. We replaced his cassette, his entire drivetrain really, gave him a gear strap and everything he needs to ride on the trails without a pack. Hey, we even fished a cable through his frame. And hey, check this out. 
It doesn't make any noise. It's so dialed now. That, this bike was making all sorts of rattling sounds from everywhere when we first got it. Now you can just give it hell and it makes no rattling whatsoever. So with that, let's stare at it. So I think this bike looks really good. We know it doesn't make any noise and we know it's dialed. And so I think Jake's gonna be stoked. But first, I gotta take this out on the trail and test it. If you've been following this channel, you know that I had a kind of a major injury over here in my foot. I'm gonna do what I can on this bike. things just happened. Clap the fork big time. Second of all, I almost went down. I thought I was going down when I was at the end of the skinny. I felt like I was going to go off the edge and I made it <laughs> through the whole line for the first time since my injury in October. Maybe that wasn't the safest way to do it on somebody else's bike, but I mean, if you've been here, you know how we do things. I am so happy to be doing these parts spin upgrade videos again because it's fixing up somebody's bike in the community and getting them more excited about going out on the trails. Jake, I hope you like your new fixed up improved bike. You guys will meet him at some point. For now, I'm glad I survived that little shred. I'm glad the bike turned out so well. Even Oscar got a little bit of shredding in. And if you like this type of video, I started a parts bin upgrade playlist. Basically, anytime we go and do some bike upgrades on this channel, it goes in the playlist, and so you can binge watch them all in one shot. And if you enjoy this channel, make sure you subscribe to Burn Peak Express. This is our second channel. We do more off-the-cuff casual content like this. Anyway, thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.